everyone. Um, I hope you're having a nice lockdown day. And uh, I really wish that you are studying very hard for the test next Thursday. Uh, and I hope you're doing fine. So, uh, uh, you know, if you had any problems, you can always uh, text me or send me to my uh, email. Anyways, so t today we will be discussing a fairly simple topic, which is uh, known as the zero force members. As the name states, members that do not have forces within. Now, why this is an important topic? Simply because it simplifies our solving of problems. Now, zero force members. Why do we have zero force members? Now, the book says that these members or these zero force members are actually used to increase the stability of the truss or the structure during the construction process. Because during the construction process of these trusses, sometimes loading changes or it actually changes all the time. And then we need the whole truss to be supported during the construction. Also, we will see that loading actually might change with time. If you had a bridge and you had a dynamic load, for example, a car uh, moving on that bridge, you will see that this loading is actually changing. So starting from zero and then having a value and then zero again and so on and so forth. So basically you need to have some members that should actually resist this loading conditions that might change with time. Now, for example, let's go to page 226, 226, I hope, yeah, uh, 276, sorry, yeah, 276. Now, look at this, this roof truss. So, this is a truss, truss that, support, that is supposed to, you know, support this roof and loading, also the whole, you know, to, to support the whole structure. Now, we will see later that this member, this member in the center is a zero force member. Okay, zero force member, meaning that it supports no load whatsoever. It does not support any load and it does not support any uh, support reactions or counteract any support reactions. But why is it there? Because, for example, imagine that in the future you decided to hang a plant there, a plant with some weight. So now, because the loading has changed, now we have loading in the y direction, so this member should actually counteract that load. So it has to be there. Also, during the construction process, this uh, beam or member will definitely support the whole structure or portion of the load applied to the structure. So we need to have these, these zero force members. Now, why do we need to find which members are zero force members? As I said, just to simplify our solving of these kinds of problems. Now, let's just take a look at, at uh, our section again and just try to analyze some, some parts. Now, look at this truss or structure. Let's go to point A or joint A, for example. Now, at joint A, uh, you can see that at joint A, one, we do not have any external loads, right? And two, we do not have any support reactions. What we have here is two beams or two members, AF and AB. Now, if I asked you to find the forces in these members, member AB and AF, you would draw the free body diagram for this joint, right? For joint A. You would say that we have a force going in the positive y direction, for example, which is AF, and force going in the positive x direction, which is AB, for example. So you have point A, you have AF and AB. Now, if you use your equations of equilibrium, summation of forces in the x equals 0 and in the y equals 0, like this, then you'll come up with, this, uh, with these values. Immediately, you'd say that if AB is actually 0, because there's no other force in the x direction going in the opposite direction, in the x axis going in the opposite direction. So if AB should be 0. It's the same scenario for if AF, force in member AF must also be 0, because there's no other force in the y direction. So, these two members are zero force members, AF and AB. Now, the first rule says that if, and listen carefully, guys, if 
we have two non-collinear members. Non-collinear. AF and AB are non-collinear, meaning the angle is, is lower than 180. Non-collinear members. And only two members. If we have two non-collinear members and there are no external loading being applied or support reactions at this joint, then these two members are zero force members. Again, if we have two non-collinear members, AB, AB and AF are non-collinear, there are no external loads or support reactions here, then these two members must be zero force members. This is the same case for point or joint D. At D, we have two non-collinear members, no external loading is being applied at D, and no support reactions there, so DE and DC members are zero force members. So basically in this truss or in this structure, the loading is being supported by this structure only, or these members only, FE, EC, CB, and BF along with member uh, EB. Now, we cannot work with E because E now we have to start with, we have more than two members. It says two non-collinear members. We have EF, ED, EC and EB, point one. Point two, we can actually later ignore the existence of ED because it's a zero force member, but we still, we will end with, we will end up with EC, EB and EF. Now, at B, we cannot work there because we have support reaction. And at C, we also cannot use this joint because we have external loading applied. So, our first rule says that if we have two non-collinear members and no external loading being applied or no support reactions there, then these two members are zero force members. This is the first scenario. The second scenario now, please look here. If we go to joint D and we draw the free body diagram for D, we would see that we have DE in this direction, DC in this direction, and DA in this direction. If you orient your X and Y axis in this direction, in these directions, you would see that, for example, we have FDA, uh, we have FDA along the positive X axis, and FDC along the positive Y axis, FDE along the negative Y axis. If you carry out your equations of equilibrium uh, or apply your equations of equilibrium to this uh, free body diagram, you would see that FD should equal to FDC because they should, should have negative or opposite values, should have opposite and similar values. So FDE and FDC are not zero force members, but, but you can see that FDA must be a zero force member because there's no other force in the opposite direction to be counteracted by FDA. So FDA now, immediately we would know that FDA is a zero force member. So our second rule says that if we have two collinear members, collinear, uh, collinear meaning the angle is 180 between them. If we have three members, or if we have three members now, not two, three members, of which two at least are collinear members, and no external loading is being applied, no support reaction whatsoever are, is here, then the third member is or must be a zero force member. Again, if we have three members, of which two at least are collinear, then the third member is a zero force member given that no external loading or support reactions are applied at joint D. So, as you can see, then DA is a zero force member. The same scenario applies to member CA. CA is also a zero force member because we have three members, two of which are collinear. The other one, uh, then the other one must have a, a value of zero because we have no external loading being applied or support reactions. So, we could actually simplify our truss uh, by drawing it like uh, this outer triangle. Hmm? That's it. Now, let's, let's solve some problems and uh, try to find out zero force members. Actually, I, I, I chose several trusses from the book and uh, probably the questions are different. They're probably asking for other things to find the whole forces and everything. But I want you just to find and try and find the zero force members. Let's see. Now, look guys, so this is, this is a preliminary problem. This is preliminary problem 6-2. 
page 285. This is A. Now, guys, please look at this member or at this structure, sorry, or at this truss. Now, what we need to look for first are the joints where no loading is being applied. So we have a joint H, probably F probably E, D, and any, any other place where no external loading or support reactions are applied. Let's start with H, it's the simplest, why? Because we have only two members. So, now, look at H. No external loading, no support reactions, and we have two non-collinear members. Then, immediately, we would say that H, H, A, sorry. Then, immediately, we would say that H, A and H, G members are zero force members so ha so f ha equals f hg equals zero right because again we have a joint at that joint we have no external loading or support reactions and we have two members that are non-collinear then immediately we would say that hg and ha are zero force members the same scenario applies for for joint d look at d no external loading, no support reactions. We have two non-collinear members. Then member CA, uh, sorry, member DC and member DE are zero force members. So F E D equals F C D or DC, whatever you want to call it. This is zero. D or this is D, right? My my D is the worst. Okay, now one very important point to consider is the following, guys. First, we have to look for points or joints where we have only two members and there's no external loading or support reactions. We, I think we were done, but if you inspect point or uh, joint E again, now, by inspection of joint E, we already know that this member is a zero force member. Now, at E, we have three members, ED, EC, and EF, so three members. We cannot work with these three members because we don't have at least two of which are uh, collinear. We have to apply the first rule, which says, which, say, which says that we should have at least, at most, two members that are non-collinear. Now, this is the case because we can actually ignore the existence of ED because it's a zero force member, so you just could, you could take it out and just throw it away. So take this out, we will end up with two members, EC and EF. Both of them, they are, sorry, they are non-collinear and there's no external loading being applied here. So immediately I would say that F E C equals F E F and this is zero as well. Right? That's it. Why? Because we can actually ignore the existence of this member. It's a zero force member. So we will end up only with two force, with two members non-collinear and no external loading applied, then FEF and FCEC must be zero force members. Okay, that's it. If you inspect any other portions, you would see that there are no more uh, zero force members left, or at least I hope, I don't want to be mistaken. So six, six members are zero force members. You cannot consider CE, CF as a zero force member because here, we have support reaction. Here we have external loading, and so on. Now let's look another at another preliminary problem, also six two, but this is figure B. Now in figure B, so in figure A we use this scenario: if only two non-collinear members form a truss joint and no external load or support reaction is applied to the joint, the two members must be zero force members. This is the scenario for. A. Now let's, let's just look uh, at B. Now at B we would use the other scenario, the second scenario, which says that if we have two collinear members, sorry, if we have three members at which two at least, uh, two of them are, uh, at which, oof, sorry, if we have three members uh, forming a joint, of which, of which, sorry, of, not at, I'm really bad at English, sorry, but by the way, my second language is Japanese, not English, anyway, so, so, um, so this, this joint at B, uh, now, we have three members, B, A, B, C, and B, G, uh, now, we can see that 
two of these members are collinear, meaning the angle is 180 between them. Then, if we have no support reactions, no external loading, then the third member should be a zero force member. So, by inspection, immediately we would say that BG is a zero force member. So, we have BG. Now, you go and work with G. At G, we have four members actually GA, GF, GC, and GB. But, but we already said that G, BG is a zero force member. So, we can ignore it actually exists. So, we will work with just three members, two of which are collinear. The angle is 180 between them, no force is being applied there. Then this member must be a zero force member. So, uh, sorry. So, GC is a zero force member. Now, go and work with C. C, we have four members one, two, three, four. But the fourth one is a zero force member, we already know that. Then we have three members, two of which are collinear. The other one, must be a zero force member, so CF is a zero force member. You go to F and work in the same manner, so one, two, three, four, but the fourth one is a zero force member, so because these two are collinear, then FD must be a zero force member. So the whole loading basically is supported by the outer triangle, this one. All the other members inside the truss are zero force members, they basically do nothing except that they might actually resist some loading if the loading conditions has or have changed okay i've i've uh, I've, uh, I've written these two uh, uh, scenarios here so you could actually ch check them at all times anyways these are the same sentences from our uh, statics book now let's let's uh, uh, inspect a bit more complicated uh, problem it's not really complicated but we need to understand some portions of it now this 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 truss is a symmetric one why because if you assume that this is a mirror and this is a body then this is a, an image whatever uh, so the right hand side or the right side of this member or the, the right side of this member is, is is identical to the left one meaning that if you just solve half of it then you'll solve the other, the other half now let's inspect uh, joints one by one we go to G, we cannot actually do anything with G because here we have support reactions, so nothing applies there. We go to F, start with F. Now, at F, we have one, two collinear members and the third one is here, so it should be a zero force member. So this is a zero force member. FH is a zero force member. Now you go to H. Now at H, you have four members, uh, four members, one, two, three, four, but we know this one is a zero force member. So now we have three members, of which two are collinear. So the third one should be a zero force member. So zero force members are HG and, sorry, uh, no, not HG, HF and HE. These are zero force members. Now, now, let's move to point E. We cannot work there because we have external loading. Let's move to joint I or point I, whatever you want to call it. Now, at I, we have four members. Four members. One, two, three, four. We could not. We couldn't say this is zero force member. No, this is not because this one should resist loading in the y direction. So now we have one, two, three, four members. So our formulas or our uh, rules do not apply. F only two. F three. So here we have four members then we can actually expect that since this one is not a zero force member then this one also is not a zero force member if you try and solve it by applying uh, the method of joints or sections you'll see that this member is not a zero force member now due to symmetry due to symmetry we could see that lb and lc are also zero force members so lc and lb are actually zero force members as well right at b we have two collinear members. The third one is a zero force member. Go to L. This one doesn't exist anymore for us. So LA and LK are collinear members. The other one should be a zero force member given that no external loading is applied here or any support reactions. So that's it, guys. As simple as that. Now, what we've done now would actually simplify our solving of such kind of problems. 
please try to solve it using method of joints, uh, the one that we used before, and then you know ignore ignore that we found the zero force members, and then uh, try to, you will see that uh, these members are actually zero force members by applying equations of equilibrium. Thank you. Later today we will continue with um, the method of sections. Thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye.